Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of grace. Here the love of Christ shall end divisions. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Good morning, friends. I'm Pastor Kevin of Faith Lutheran Church. And it is, once again, a pleasure to welcome each of you to our online worship service. This service is being prepared for Sunday, January 14th. And this is the second Sunday after Epiphany. In our introduction to today's texts, we read, All the baptized have a calling in God's world. God calls not just pastors and deacons, but also the youngest child like Samuel. The story of the calling of Nathaniel plays with the idea of place. Nathaniel initially dismisses Jesus because he comes from Nazareth. But where we come from isn't important. It's where, or rather, whom we come to. Jesus refers to Jacob, who had a vision in a place he called the house of God in the gate of heaven. Jesus says he himself is the place where Nathaniel will meet God. During this season of Epiphany, we come expectant, waiting and praying that God will reveal God's self to us even today. Our worship begins as we confess our sins and receive the assurance of God's mercy. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of darkness and light, word of truth, wind sweeping over the waters. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God, our rock and refuge, we pour out our hearts before you. We have known you, but have not always loved you. We have wounded one another and sinned against you. We have not always recognized the Holy Spirit dwelling in each of us. Remember your covenant, renew your creation, restore us that we might proclaim your good news to all. Amen. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken. The time of grace is now. In Jesus, the reign of God has come near. By the authority of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are God's beloved. Amen. The grace that is Christ's gift to us, the love of God, and the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace be with you all. Please join me now in the prayer of the day. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day, praising you with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord.
first reading assigned for this second Sunday after Epiphany is from the book of 1 Samuel. We'll read from the third chapter, verses 1 through 10. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm assigned for this morning is Psalm 139. We'll read verses 1 through 6 and then skip ahead and read verses 13 to 18. Lord, you have searched me out. O Lord, you have known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You encompass me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you while I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my limbs yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. My days were fashioned before they came to be. How deep I find your thoughts, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. To count them all, my lifespan would need to be like yours. Here ends the reading from the Psalms. The second lesson for this morning is from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. We'll read from the sixth chapter, verses 12 through 20. Paul writes, all things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore, 
glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, we prepare our hearts for the gospel. The Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So friends, I have to tell you that I am somewhat conflicted about all the jumping around we do with our scripture text around this time of the year. This is the second year in our three-year lectionary rotation, so this is the year of Mark. And you'd think that we might just start reading the Gospel of Mark and stick with that, but instead here we are, bouncing back into the Gospel of John. And on the one hand, I think that we lose a lot of the continuity of the text. But on the other hand, I think that at this moment, as we enter into the season of Epiphany, John's gospel is just the perfect fit. Epiphany is a season of revelations. It is a season in which our eyes are open to new insights about God and God's love and grace as revealed to us by God through the scriptures, through nature, through the amazing powers of God, and most clearly and concisely and fully through the Word made flesh, Christ Jesus our Lord. So here's why I think John's gospel is perfect for this moment. It's because John's gospel is a gospel of signs. Now a sign is something that points us in the right direction, we hope. A sign says, There's the city you're looking for up ahead. Stay on this road for 30 more miles and you'll see it on the right. The sign reveals the way to our destination. And that's exactly what John's gospel does. It very strongly leans into the idea that each event, each person, each story and act of Jesus is always about pointing us in the direction of who Jesus is, just as Jesus is pointing us to the true identity and nature of God. And in John's Gospel, we have this chain of witnesses who act as signs. Jesus is baptized by John in the Jordan, and a dove descends from heaven on Jesus, and that is a sign for John that Jesus is indeed the Son of God. So John points his own disciples away from himself and toward Jesus. And then Jesus reveals himself to Philip, and Philip finds Nathanael and points him toward Jesus. And this chain of witnesses, it grows, and they become signs for the crowds and for us, each of them revealing something unique about Jesus through their own relationship with him. And I think that this story of Philip pointing Jesus out to Nathanael is really a very telling example to us about how we are to live as signs and witnesses revealing Jesus to others. 
In the story, once Philip has met Jesus, he is apparently just filled with a sense of joy and wonder and hope, and he can't help himself. He can't hold it in, and he can't hold himself back, so he runs to find his friend Nathaniel, and he proclaims just what he has seen and heard. He doesn't give him a, a lecture or a sermon or a theological discourse on prophetic views of the Messiah from M Moses to Zephaniah, according to the scripture and rabbinical tradition. He just blurts out his truth to him. We found this guy who we think might be the one God promised to send. It's Jesus from Nazareth. Do you think that this could be him? And Nathaniel says, Nazareth? Nazareth? That podunk little nothing of a town? Where do the scriptures even hint at Nazareth? Where in the scriptures is Nazareth even mentioned? And given Nazareth's reputation, can anything good come from Nazareth? And I tell you what, if I were Philip, I would have just loved to dive into it with Nathaniel. Oh, Nathaniel, you little smarty pants. Of course, Nazareth isn't named in the Hebrew scriptures, but, but all through the text, the messianic clues are about who he descends from, not so much where. He will be the offspring of David. And, and you know as well as I that that might be a metaphorical offspring of David rather than a physical descendant of him. It could just as easily be that God's promised one will be someone who epitomizes God's justice and wisdom and grace in a manner like David's or, or even surpassing David's. And that would make him metaphorically a branch of David. And besides that, Nathaniel, didn't the exalted rabbi once say in that obscure comment attributed to him in some footnote of some celebrated archaic academic treatise that the Messiah would be thus and so, and that's how I debate him. And oh, oh yeah, I would have loved to have gone nose to nose with old Nathaniel. I'd have it out with him in a scriptural debate. But Philip, he was so much wiser than I am. He didn't try to argue or debate Nathaniel into a belief in Jesus. Instead, he just says, well, humor me. Come and see. And Nathaniel must have figured it was the least he could do for his buddy Philip. So he went down and they found Jesus. And Jesus revealed himself to Nathaniel in a way that uniquely spoke to Nathaniel and convinced him fully and passionately that Jesus was indeed the absolute son of the living God. And Nathaniel followed Jesus. And that's the template for us as well. In the season of Epiphany, we're not called to just sit back and marvel at the way that God has revealed God's self to humanity throughout history. It's not just a matter of being wowed by the memory of God's appearance to Moses on the mountain. It's not just about recalling how the prophets once spoke God's message to the people. It's not just about remembering God's mighty acts that defied nature and science and, and logic and therefore communicated the presence of the one who is beyond nature, above the mundane and the very definition of the divine. It's not even just about us reflecting on the acts of Christ Jesus in our scriptures. The epiphany season is not just a season to look over our shoulders into the past. It's a time for us to open our eyes to who Jesus is to us now. It's a time to see how Jesus' presence in our lives impacts us in our now. It's a time to consider whether or not we still see him in the power and grace that reveals God's true identity to us. And if so, it's a time for us to ask ourselves how that changes us, grows us, and drives us on into a better future because of it. And I guess the deal is that if this doesn't excite us as much as it once excited Philip, then maybe we need to ask ourselves why that is. Why am I not running to find my friends and share with them what it is that I think that I've found in this man from Nazareth? 
Why am I reluctant to speak, reluctant to admit my faith, reluctant to own my own faith in public? Is it because I have forgotten the truth of it? Is it because it has somehow become so mundane to me that I now just take it for granted? Do I no longer believe in the aspects of this faith in God revealed through Christ Jesus that were the most vital and compelling and, and life-giving to me in the beginning? Do I worry that if I called someone to come and see with me, we might end up looking at nothing at all anymore? I'll grant you that that might be the case. Maybe we're not so naive as we had once been. Perhaps our faith in his revelations had a limited shelf life and now we no longer believe like we once did and we only continue because our tradition and our sense of loyalty demand it. But if that's the case, I would remind us that the God of power and might the creative energy that brought this world and every universe into life is still as full of power and love and creativity as God was in the very beginning. And God has not given up caring for us and showing up for us in our daily lives. God's miracles still happen today. They happen in hospital rooms and school rooms and grocery stores. They happen wherever two or three meet and, and find a way to love one another, even if they happen to worship God under a different name or vote for that other party or watch that other cable news network. God's nature is still revealing itself to us today through the scriptures, the mighty acts of God, and also through those who dare to encounter God face to face, honestly and humbly, and find God through the man from Nazareth who sees us as we are and loves us where we are and longs for us to come and see him more closely still and invite our loved ones to come and see him with us as well. Amen. Thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me, save that Thou art. Thou my best thought, by day or by night, waking or sleeping, Thy presence my light. Be Thou my wisdom, and Thou my true word, I ever with thee, and thou with me, Lord. Thou my soul's shelter, and thou my high tower. Raise thou me heavenward, O power of my power. Riches I need not, nor vain empty praise. Thou mine inheritance, now and always. Thou and Thou only, first in my heart. High King of heaven, my treasure Thou art. High King of heaven, my victory won. May I reach heaven's joys, O heaven's sun. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O ruler of all. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me, save that thou art, thou my best thought, by day or by night, waking or sleeping, thy presence, my light. And now our worship continues as we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all of creation. Encourage the ministry and mission of the church, God of truth. Let the leaders of your church be trustworthy and accountable stewards that all its resources and outreach bring hope and healing to communities. God of grace, receive our prayer. Delight in the goodness of your creation, God of fig trees and fertile soil. Heal areas of the world harmed by human greed. Restore those recovering from natural disaster. Protect our forests and waterways and all the creatures that live in them. God of grace, receive our prayer. Call the leaders of every neighborhood and nation to serve faithfully, God of wisdom. Give them visions of justice and unity. Lead them to action that promotes equitable partnership and uplifts those on the margins of society. God of grace, receive our prayer. Hold in your care any who suffer and struggle, God of compassion. You who know our inner hearts, be present with any who are oppressed, victims of racism or cultural bias, and all who long for respite, restoration, or healing. This morning we especially pray for Ron, Maya, Bishop Satterley, Cheryl, Mary, Phyllis, Inez, Ben, John, Cecilia, Kathy, Jacob, Brody, Kim, Denny, Jim, Jerry, Dawn, Marianne, Claudia, Nancy, Jeanette, Brett, Christine, Ron, Mike, Kathy, Myrtle, William, and all those who live or work at the Samaritas Lodge, Woods, and Terraces. God of grace, receive our prayer. Give this congregation the anticipation and excitement of Samuel, so inspired and empowered to do your work in the world, God of unity. Make us faithful as we build communities of inclusion and mutual care. God of grace, receive our prayer. Trusting God who raised Jesus and will also raise us in spirit and truth, we remember all who have died and are at peace among the saints, especially the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., whose faithful advocacy for peace and justice continues to embolden the church. God of grace, receive our prayer. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers in the silent prayers of our hearts. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
the Lord, my Savior, live in. What though the darkness gather round, songs in the night he given. No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm clinging. Since Christ is mine. my heart a fountain ever springing all things are mine since I am his how can I keep from singing no storm can shake my inmost calm while to that rock I'm clinging since Christ is Lord Now we join together in the offertory prayer. Blessed are you, Holy One, for all good things come from you. In and through your word and presence, you open heaven to us. Meet us in our worship, our devotion, our prayer and praise, and in our daily lives and relationships, that all people may receive what you seek to offer as we follow your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray, amen. Guided by the light of Christ, let us pray his prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Giver of every gift, Christ has given us even his own body as our food, that we may serve as Christ's body in our world. Raise us to life by your power for the benefit of all and to your glory now and forever. Amen. Now we receive the blessing. God who names you, Christ who claims you, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, bless you and remain with you always. Amen. Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. Go in peace. You are God's beloved. Thanks be to God.
Today.